Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from ExecuteAutomation.com and welcome to another video of our test project course. And in this video, we're talking about data-driven testing with CSV in test project. All right, so let's get started. Data-driven testing is one of the popular test automation practice. Many automation testing tools supports different way of DDT and supports different file format to perform DDT. Some of the common file formats that many tools supports are like JSON, Excel sheet, CSV file, or databases. And test project supports data-driven testing with CSV with different delimiters, something like pipe or space or comma separator, something like that. So we are going to do this data-driven testing using test project in this video. All right, so let's see everything in action and understand how things work. So for that, I'm gonna flip to Chrome browser. All right, so this is my test project account, and then I'm going to navigate to the Executor Automation test. This is the same iOS test that we saw in our previous video. So I'm just going to open the same iOS test right now, and I have already connected my iPhone with my Windows machine so that I can start doing the recording and then executing the test. So I'm going to hit this record button right now, and if you recollect what we did in our previous video, we were doing this parameterization, as you can see in this particular step. You can see it's highlighted or something like that. So we were searching a value using this particular parameterized option. So if you could see here what value that we searched, if I hit the plus button there, you can see the value we searched last time was actually test project. So we are basically going to use the same concept here, but instead of running the test with the static value, for this particular parameter, which is nothing but the test project, we are going to make use of CSV file to do that. This is really, really a cool option because we can run multiple different tests based on the value that we're going to supply within this particular test. So let's quickly see how to do that. So for that, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do this save and exit. I don't really have to run anything in here or create an Excel sheet. If you see, there is an option called data source here. So if I click this data sources option within my project here, you can see I already have an CSV file created, but we can create a new CSV file. So I can just click this add new uh, data source and then I can give a name here and let's call this as test data input. And then you need to upload the file here. So basically for uploading the file, you need to have a file of the particular data source. So since we don't know what is the value that we need to input for the CSV file, how the heading should look like and how the format or the template should look like for the data source for the particular test, you can do a very, very simple option here. You can just close this particular window and you can go back to the test once again. And you can see within this iOS test here, you can see there's an option called more. You can just click that. And once you come all the way down here, there is something called as download CSV template. So this is really, really a very good option because if you download this CSV template here, you can see it will generate an iOS test parameter.csv file. So I can just open this guy and you can see it has generated an Excel sheet uh, CSV file for me. What I can do is I can straight away start adding some value there, something like execute automation or test project or selenium that whatever value that we searched in our previous video. So we can keep on adding all those value in here. So I'm going to start typing the value here, something like execute automation and then selenium and test project. So you can see that I'm keep on adding all the value. But in our test case, we have not even written even a single piece of code to do an iteration, but still, I'm just adding all those values here and then I'm just going to save it completely. So it seems like it has been saved and then I'm going to close this CSV file. So now we have like four values within the CSV file. And if I go to the data source and if I try to upload the CSV file for iOS test, and then I'm just going to upload this file over here. And then I'm going to create it. You can see that the file has been uploaded. The far iOS test, I can probably delete this guy. So this is the only CSV file I have to reduce the confusion here. And then I can go back to the test. And now I want to use the CSV file to run the test. 
right? So now if I hit this execute button, you can see I can click this run button here. And once I hit this, you can see it is going to ask me which agent I'm going to run this test. So basically this is my local agent and this is my device that I'm going to run. And if I hit next, you can see it says that I have an input parameter called YouTube search text. So this is the one that we created in our previous video where we input the value like test project. You can even do that or there is an option called override default input parameter. So I can also override this input parameter in such a way that I can use a data source, which is nothing but the far iOS test CSV file that we just uploaded. So I can select that. And if I hit execute now, you can see that it is going to start executing the test for us. And it is going to execute actually four tests for me. One is for exit automation, then for Selenium test project, and then for Appium. So you can see that every time it's going to connect to my device and then it's going to run all the tests for me. So basically, if you want to see what's really happening during the runtime of this particular test, you can click this, but you don't really see anything in this particular piece. So if I click this, you can see that it won't actually show you what test is actually happening, but it is actually happening in my cell phone right now. But there is an option called job monitor. So if you click that, it will actually uh, tell you what job it is currently executing. But as of now, the team is not going to show you anything here until you create a new job and execute it. Since we are just executing the test based on the selected test, it is not being displayed. But you can see in the report like how it's going to look like. So you can see it's a real time. It is showing like how the test is executing. So it seems like almost all the tests are getting passed. And I can see in my real device physically that the test is currently executing. You can see another test has also got completed. Then it is running the third test. I guess it's running the fourth test now. All right, seems like all the test has been completed successfully. And now I can click this more button. And if I go to the reports, you can see that I have this particular report coming in. But it seems like there is some failure happened during this execution. The report is much intuitive enough to show that to us. So I can see that these are the things which has happened during this iteration. It seems like it couldn't able to click this particular uh, this value. So there is a screenshot as well. So it seems like it is loading the screenshot. So this is really, really cool to see that if there is any error happened. So it also shows a screenshot for us. So it seems like it couldn't able to click that value because the value hasn't been typed there, the selenium. That's why it got failed. Uh, let's go to the third test. I think all the test has got failed in this particular area. I guess there is something to do with this guy. I think it's because of the keyboard. Now I remember that because if you remember in our previous videos, I was showing that we cannot use the Google keyboard. We should use the default iPhone keyboard. And that's the reason this particular tests are actually fading. All right, I got that. And now if I try to run this test, this test should run fine without any problem. So I'm going to go back again to the home and I'm going to select the exit automation test and I'm just going to run the whole test now again. So once again, I'm going to select the agent, this one, and this is my iPhone and I'm going to overwrite the value. The data source I'm going to select is the iOS test and then I'm going to hit execute. So you can see that this time it should execute the test without any problem and now it proves the point to us that if you go to the reports, you can see that it is actually executing all the tests for us in multiple different values that we supplied within our CSV file. So for this iOS test, you can see that every time it ran the test for different data source. That's why there is a symbol here, the data source symbol. So it has iterations happened with the use of the data source here. That's really, really cool. So you can see that we did nothing or even we did not write a single line of code here and we could able to achieve the data driven testing with test project much easily and much individually. And even the input parameters that we discussed in our previous video has come into handy while it is trying to execute the test by overriding the existing value in the test into the CSV value that we are trying to input. That's also really, really cool. And the another added advantage that you saw is every time it ran the test, it took a screenshot of the failure and we could able to easily see what has gone wrong during the runtime like this. And the most important message that you can note here is this one. It says that 
the keyboard is not present so the keyboard it says ns localized localized description keyboard is not present so now i could able to easily identify that the problem has happened because of the keyboard because the keyboard is currently not supported similarly if there is any known issues that you had before with your test you can easily find that as well now i can go to this report let me see what's happening and let me select this execute automation test i guess we should have uh, a new report right now because the test has successfully completed in my device i could see that you can see that this test has got green color which means it is 100 percent passed this time and you can see it has also clicked the uh, execute automation for us right so it has typed this value and it has selected the first value so this was something which was not happening uh, before it was failing in our previous test but now it has got passed in here and it has also executed all the different iterations of value so you can see it has entered selenium the third iteration and appium in the fourth iteration so all the value that we supplied from the csv file has now been entered and it has been successfully completed as well that's really cool so that's the power of data driven testing using test project so that's it guys this is how you can do data driven testing much easily and simply with test project once again thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day